Last episode, we said the reason Put the Order Book on Chain failed for years wasn't just that chains were too slow, it's that blockchain consensus mechanism and matching engine pull against each other. Chains chase network-wide consistency, matchers engine require microsecond ordering, the designs conflict at the core. But in the past two years, things have turned a corner. Raw performance kept climbing, and consensus began to be re-architected. That gives chains, for the first time, the prerequisites to host a matching engine. The progress comes from three directions. First, from bid-based ordering to time priority. On classic chains, the sequence gets decided late. They collect transactions, build a block, then settle the order. And gas bidding not al rival time often sets the sequence. That's fine for settlement, but it's too late and too loose for a live order book. The new path flips it. Decide who's first up front, then build the block. Some chains go even further with semantics-aware rules, for example, cancel order auto priority over new order's placement, since a failed cancel creates bigger risk. These aren't ad hoc tweaks, they're protocol rules every validator must apply the same way. As the result, for the first time, blockchain has the granularity that real markets need. Second, consensus confirms and native engine executes. Old attempts failed because the chain tried to make every node execute everything. Place, cancel, match, the whole network ran the matcher, and costs exploded. The new path splits the job. Sequence is reached by the network, consensus, while execution is handled by a native engine. Results are written back on chain and verified by all. Full nodes don't rerun a giant matching loop, they verify that the results are consistent. One important clarification, a quote-unquote specialized execution engine isn't an off-chain accelerator or some company's private server. To count as truly on-chain, it must meet three hard rules. Every validator runs under the same logic, all validators reach the same result, and chain state depends on those results. Meet those, and the engine is effectively part of the chain, not a swappable module, not an operator's private tool. Some new designs even bake the order book into the state machine, so each validator must run the same matching program during block execution. The book state becomes legitimate chain state, which means there's no off-chain shadow book that can be silently swapped in. This is the second foundation that makes on-chain CLOBs possible. Third, rewrite the cadence, no more stuttered frames. The old problem wasn't just slow, it was coarse cadence. Each confirmation was a single frame, so the book looked like a choppy animation. The new direction decouples the rhythm. The execution layer updates the book continuously. The chain confirms sequence and results at very short intervals. Consensus locks in every fill. Continuous execution, frequent confirmations, auditable results. From a user view, this is the first real-time verifiable on-chain tape. Stack these three shifts, and the chain is not just a settlement tool anymore. It's part of the matching itself. The real shift isn't speed, it's power. If you only look at chain's performance, you'll miss the point. The essence of on-chain CLOB is making the hidden powers of the server public. The queue order is public, the matching logic is public, the book state is public, and the execution trace is public. This isn't a better CEX, it's neither an AMM substitute. It's a third type execution environment, transparent sequencing, an auditable process, and unfakeable fills. In a sense, it's not that chains grew stronger, it's that chains were forced to adapt to what matching requires. But as more projects claim on-chain matching, a question follows. Who's real and who's just writing the results to the chain after the matching? A new standard is emerging. Let's start with the core rule. The process has to be public, not just the result. If we can't see placements, cancels, sequencing, and the path of each fill, it isn't real transparency. A tidy end state on-chain isn't enough. The path to that end has to be visible. Now add a cross-check. The book's behavior should stand up to outside verification. Compare it against other venues. If a platform's trading seems to mirror Binance Spot or Perps for long stretches, yet there's no corresponding on-chain trail of orders and fills, that's not on-chain matching, that's internal routing dressed up as on-chain matching. We've seen cases like Aster flag just this way. Without deeper border and execution data, third-party analysts couldn't verify fills, and major data sources dropped it. You can't fake transparency, you can only prove it. And there's the replay test. Can someone else rebuild your tape from on-chain events alone? True on-chain matching means a third party can take the omitted events and reconstruct the day's order book and fills.
if the tape can't be replayed, it isn't on-chain matching. You don't judge a DEX by trust or slogans, you judge it by whether it can be checked. At this point, we've covered two dimensions of decentralized exchanges. Custody, can assets be self-custodied, verified, and kept out of platform reach? Execution transparency, can the matching, sequencing, queues, and settlement be fully reconstructed? Next episode, we move into the third dimension. Who can change the rules? Who can swap out consensus? Who can alter the matching logic? Who can freeze contracts? Who holds final authority over the system? Governance is the last yardstick for whether an exchange truly belongs to its users.